hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is which of the following options is the most likely explanation of the above pedigree and first of all I want to tell you that today I have prepared three questions based on this pedigree so if you know answer to the first question please wait for the other two because I am pretty sure that you are going to learn something new today. What kind of peculiarities we have here? Take a look, here is a couple and woman here is affected and all her children are also affected and in this couple this woman affected and 100% of her children are affected but take a look here, here is a male affected and none of his children, he is only one child but this child is not affected. When you see a pattern like this in 99% this means mitochondrial genetic disorder, answer C. Before we proceed to the next questions I want to show you this picture. He is an egg cell, he is a spermium, how much bigger do you think egg cell than spermium? Do you think 100 times, maybe 1000 times or 100,000 times? No, Excel bigger than spermium, single spermium, 10 million times by volume. And those single spermium does have mitochondria, but when it penetrates Excel, this number of mitochondria is negligible in comparison with number of mitochondria which is inside Excel. And even if male, this spermium has some mutation in mitochondria, the number of this mitochondria is going to be just negligible, is not going to affect the health of the child which would be conceived. But if mother would be affected, would have this defect, then 100% of her children would be also affected with this genetic disorder and would have this defective genes. This explains this pattern of inheritance. Now we are moving to the second slide and the same pedigree and here is a question. In the previous question autosomal dominant was a potential answer that could fit the pattern of affected individuals. If we assume that this condition is inherited as an autosomal dominant way, then what was the likelihood that all five of the third generation offspring in the single family were affected? So here is the first generation, here is the second generation and here is the third generation. And the question is if we assume because we also can get such a pattern if we assume that this is autosomal dominant genetic disorder and for example genotype of this female is going to be capital A small a, uh, genotype of this male is going to be small a small a. Let's assume now that daughter got dominant allele from the mother side and recessive allele from the father side and the same uh, allele, dominant allele got son and recessive allele from the father side. So they are both affected, they are both heterozygous because this is dominant genetic disorder. So dominant allele A here means defective allele. And in this case also this couple may have children who are going to be affected. But what is the probability that if mother is heterozygous that all five children in this family, in this couple are going to be affected. We assume that this male is phenotypically normal. So we have mother who is heterozygous, father who is homozygous normal and let's build simple Punnett square and let's take a look what we are going to see in the progeny. So capital A small a here, small a small a here and as you see 50% of the progeny are going to be affected and another 50% of the progeny are going to be phenotypically and genotypically normal. 
So this couple has 50% chances that they would have affected child. And our calculations would be as follows. One half here or 50%, one half probability here, 50%, one half here, one half here, and one half here. Every time this couple conceive a child, this is a random event and there is same chance for each child to be affected or to be healthy. Even if a couple has four affected children, next time they conceive a child, it's not going to affect probability of this child to be affected or unaffected. Each time it is independent event. So we have to multiply all these probabilities. So one half times one half times one half times one half. One quarter times one half is going to be one eighth times one half is going to be one sixteen and times one half. And our answer is going to be probability of having five children and all of them going to be affected is going to be one over 32. Answer D. And here's one more question. Mitochondrial disease can manifest due to mutations in the genomic or mitochondrial DNA. Therefore, the phenotype of the disease is not sufficient to predict the inheritance pattern. However, which of the symptoms might increase your suspicions that this is a sign of mitochondrial mutation? There are multiple correct answers here. Can you get them? all and here's the variants to choose from. Before I will go over this list, I want to bring to your attention that mitochondrial genetic disorders can be due to genomic or nucleic uh, genome or mitochondrial DNA. In mitochondria we can find 37 genes. 12 of them code for the specific proteins, 23 of them code for uh, tRNA and two for ribosomal RNA. If any mutation would happen in these genes, we are going to see a pattern of the inheritance which we have seen in the previous two slides. But 37 genes is not enough for mitochondria to function. Many of the genes of the mitochondria which were a bacteria sometime before it became essential part of the eukaryotic cell. So hundreds of genes this bacteria lost because it doesn't need to survive anymore and produce certain proteins which organisms produce and many genes also moved from this bacteria to uh, genome, nuclear genome of the eukaryotic organism. There are hundreds such genes and if any mutation is going to happen in those genes, this might affect uh, mitochondria function. In this case, function of mitochondria would be disrupted, but pattern of inheritance would be like for other autosomal genes. Mitochondria produce energy, so what we do expect if function of mitochondria would be disrupted. Of course, this would affect the growth of the organism on the overall, so poor growth we expect. It would also cause developmental delay, but not going to uh, cause gout. And it also going to cause muscle weakness. Also would cause vision problems, but not going to cause asthma not arthritis and not scleroderma. Also take a look at this picture, which also shows different conditions, which are caused by malfunctioning mitochondria. And again, it may be caused by mitochondrial DNA mutations, but also by nuclear DNA mutations. And as you understand now, the pattern of inheritance is going to be different. So malfunctioning mitochondria may affect brain and also may affect how skeletal muscle 
uh, works, may cause weakness, fatigue, and also may affect heart, may affect eye, affect uh, optic uh, nerve, and also may affect liver, kidney, pancreas, may cause diabetes, may affect blood, and also may affect inner ear, and may affect colon, causing pseudo obstruction. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.